Hey guys, I'm Unreal Hero, and today I have another Razer Chroma Profile tutorial for you guys. And for this video, I actually decided to create a poll on my community page on my YouTube channel. And I actually gave you guys the choice on what design you wanted me to create next. So on the top of the voting polls, we have Rainbow Six Siege with just 33% of the votes, slightly edging out the Call of Duty option, which was sitting at 30% of the votes. So that's what we're gonna do for this video today. As always, you can go to the description. There will be a link to my website where you can download this profile for free. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a showcase showing you exactly what is included with this profile and what it looks like on multiple devices. And if you stay tuned, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made it step by step. So here we go. This is Rainbow Six. All right, guys, here we go with the Rainbow Six keyboard lighting design. First thing we're going to do is we're starting with a brand new effect. So we're going to click on these three dots and we're going to change this to a wave layer. After we do that, we're just going to select all of our keyboard lighting options, all of our lighting zones. We're going to change our angle at 270 degrees and we're going to check the split option here. You can see everything is all synced together, but we're going to break every piece down real quick. And we're gonna separate every piece of equipment so that there is a split on each piece. So we're gonna deselect everything and I'm just gonna select just my keyboard lighting options here. And I'm gonna click on my color drop down. I'm gonna click on this red node on the left here and I'm gonna change the last digit by one. So now you can see there is a split happening on just my keyboard. You see how it's splitting right down the middle. Select just my mouse pad here. So each piece of equipment you want to be unique. So for my mouse pad, I am going to change this to be different from what I originally had and also different from what I changed it to. Each piece has to be a different code. So I'm gonna change my fourth digit on this one by one. So just like that, now my mouse pad's done. HDK strips, I'm gonna split that and I'm gonna change the F my second F to an E, Tartarus. So I'm just gonna select the upper keys here and I'm gonna actually click on my yellow node now and I'm gonna change that last digit by one. And now I'm gonna select just my speakers. This time I'm gonna do both speakers. And to change this one up, I'm not going to change a color node. I'm just gonna angle this up at zero degrees. And now you can see there's a split happening on my speakers as well. Next, I'm gonna do the Razer Base Station. I'm gonna select the green node this time. I'm gonna change that eight to a seven. And we're pretty much almost done with all of our devices here. We got a split happening on each device. Uh, now I'm just gonna to go to my mouse and I'm gonna select the side of my Razer Basilisk here. See, we're gonna angle this down at 180. So now we have a split happening down here on the side of our mouse. So that's all we're doing for this first effect layer. Next, we're going to add a new wave layer. Make sure we have it selected and we're gonna just hold control and we're gonna scroll wheel in on our keyboard and we're gonna focus on our keyboard from here on out. We're going to select all of our key options here. Click on our color gradient dropdown, choose a two or a three node pattern. With this gradient pattern on the far right, we are going to have a black node. This middle node here is going to be invisible so you can see through it. So we're gonna drag that all the way over to the right up against the black one. And we're gonna grab this left node here and we're gonna just drag that to the middle. Click off of this and we're gonna check this split option. And the last thing we're gonna change for this is the width percentage. We're gonna change that width percentage to 200%. So now that we've done this, we're gonna start separating each individual line. Hold control and select your top row to deselect it. Click on our color dropdown and we're just gonna drag all of these nodes over just a little bit at a time. So I drag those over a little bit. Hold control, select this top line here to deselect them. Click on your color dropdown, slide it over and slide it over a little bit. Hold control, select the top line, click your gradient, slide it over, slide it over. 
hold control, select your top line, slide it over, slide it over, slide it over. So on this last line, we're gonna slide this all the way over to the left. So now we'll click off of that, we'll hit save, and you can see you kind of have a chevron looking pattern in the middle of your keyboard or an upside down pyramid effect going down the middle of your keyboard. So what we've created is kind of like a see-through overlay to our background. Before we create a new wave layer, we are going to click our bottom row here, so the last row that we edited, and we're gonna hit Control C on that. Next, we're gonna create a new wave layer. With this new wave layer selected, we are going to hold Control, and we're gonna select out the shape of our number six that's gonna show up in the middle of our keyboard. These are the keys that I'm going to be using to light up my white six in the design. So with these keys selected right here, I'm gonna paste in the effect that we use for that last horizontal line. And this gives us a base point when we click on our gradient drop down here of where we stopped. So this is where the last row starts to spread out right here on our timeline. I slide this over to the left just a little bit. And so right after that last line starts to spread, we are going to make our six. We're gonna make our six start to light up. So this right node, we're going to click and we're gonna make that invisible. This next node here, we're going to make white. So six Fs as a hex code. Just And this node over here on the left side, we are going to make invisible. So now, as you can see, the whole six doesn't light up at the same time. It kind of has like a ra random pattern going on here. We got to make each horizontal line unique. So first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to change our angle to 180 degrees. Okay. Hold control, deselect the bottom row. So we're going to select all the keys that are on this row here. And we're going to click on our color drop down and click on our white node. And we're gonna change the last digit here to an E. Hold Control, deselect our next keys, and do the same thing. Click on our color drop down, click on the white node, and we're gonna change our second digit this time to an E. Hold Control, deselect the next horizontal line, click on our color drop down, change the white to, we're just gonna take off this E on the end and add an F. Hold Control, deselect this one. And now we're just working on this last row. We're gonna click our color drop down, click on the color node, and we're gonna make the second digit an E and the fourth digit an E. So you got F, E, F, E, F, F, okay? So all of our horizontal lines are unique now. We'll hit save. Now you can see, and it should be timed up with the very last line here. As soon as that line starts to split and show the rainbow, you see the six pop up, bang. But at this point, it doesn't really pop the six. The six kinda is melded into there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add black around the six so that the six really pops whenever it starts to light up. To do this, we're gonna select one of the effects that we made on the six, control C that and copy that. And we're gonna hold control and just start selecting the keys that surround the white keys. I got these ones right here. They all border a white key and we're gonna paste in what we copied. So right now this is a white effect, but we're gonna change this to black. So we're gonna make that zero, 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 one. This node over here on the left is invisible and I want this to really like black out. So this left node, I'm also going to make black as well. So zero, 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 one. Once again, we gotta do the same thing. Not all of this is turning black at one time. So we have to make each horizontal row unique. Hold control, deselect my bottom row. We're gonna change our hex code on one of our black nodes by one. I'm gonna change the second digit on this one to a one. Hold control, deselect the next row. Select this node, 
And on the first node this time, I'm gonna change my second digit to a one. Hold control, deselect the next row, click on your color drop down. Uh, I'm gonna change my fourth digit to a one and I'm gonna erase my last digit and put a zero. Hold control, deselect the next row, color drop down. I'm gonna make a one in my second, fourth, and sixth spots right here. So zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Hold control. And now we have our last row on the top here. Color drop down, and I'm just going to erase the first one. So we have zero, 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 one, zero, one. You can see we have a pattern chevron rainbow pattern that's going down the middle of our keyboard and when it gets to the bottom it pops with a white six what about the siege part what about the rainbow six siege portion of this well that's what we're going to do with our next layer next we're going to add an audio meter layer and with this layer we are going to bring in the rainbow six siege aspect of this design which is orange and blue coloring in the game you have orange team versus blue team so that's how i incorporated rainbow six siege into this design with the audio meter layer selected we're going to focus on our keyboard here in the bottom left corner of the keys my left control down here i'm going to click my color drop down and i'm going to choose a two node pattern here my node on the left i'm going to keep invisible and my node on the right here i'm going to make orange Okay, and I'm gonna drag this orange node all the way over to the left. I'm also going to check the auto option. I'm gonna just leave the decay where it's at, and this is the settings I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna Control C to copy what we did on this key, and now I'm gonna hold Control and select the keys that border this key, and I'm gonna paste that effect on there, but I'm gonna grab my color drop down, and I'm just gonna drag it to the right a little bit. So now that we've change this and move the gradient to the right a little bit. I'm gonna copy what we did there and select the next set of keys that border this. So I'm actually gonna deselect the A there and I'm gonna hit paste on these keys right here. Do the same thing, grab your color nodes, drag them over to the right a little bit, just like that. Control C to copy that. Select another row of keys and we're gonna paste what we did last time in there change your color nodes to go down the gradient bar a little bit more copy that i'm going to go over one more i'm going to paste what we did last time and i'm just going to drag these over a little bit more copy that we'll do one more actually so i'm just going to go another row of keys out here and i'm going to paste what we did last time there and i'm going to move this up here just like that so you can see the first key that I made, you can see where the gradient bar is. It fills pretty much the whole spot. You got it all the way over here on the left. You go up one and it jumps up a bit. Go up another one, it jumps up a bit. Go up another one, it jumps up a bit. So um, you can see here they have it labeled low and high. So you can tell this one starts to turn orange at lower levels of audio. And as you get away from this corner, it takes higher and higher levels of audio to turn that orange on. So that's how you get an audio meter looking effect in your corner. And now we're gonna do the same thing over on the right side of our keyboard, but we're not gonna do it with the orange, we're just gonna do it with blue. And I'm not gonna beat you to death with how to do that. I just show you how to do it on the orange. Just do the same thing on the other side, but with blue. So if you guys do the right side correctly, your keyboard lighting design should look something like this. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial and here's the showcase for the Rainbow Six lighting design.
thank you guys so much for watching this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section below i'm always creating designs more often than not based off of your guys's comments and what you guys want to see on a razor keyboard thanks again guys and i'll see you in the next one